going to be discussing here at a, at a, at a high level. Dr. Wei? Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Daniel, for the introduction. And thanks, Dave, and everyone for organizing this uh, meeting. So it's my pleasure to share um, some, of my, some of my research on uh, visiting for the tolerance protocols and in particular, if possible, to apply this to public fabrics. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, thank you very much, okay. So I will talk about, uh, so my, my presentation will be uh, briefly three parts, uh, what's BFT introduction, and then I will talk about some industry, the popular, popular the most popular deployed BFT protocols for Ethereum at Polkadot, etc. And then I will talk about uh, why we design BDLS and how can we, uh, what kind of Im implement implementation we have and how can we apply this to public fabrics, okay? So that's my three part. And I will break good briefly about this, but I will not go into details. I think I'm, I'm sure all of you know that uh, uh, BFT protocol for computer science was in, was introduced in 1980s for distributed computer system or photo photo tolerance computing. Okay, it's a traditional Byzantine uh, Byzantine agreement agreement. It's a traditional uh, protocols in military protocols in 2000 years ago. Uh, but right now we apply that to computer science, okay? So theoretically, uh, after the 1980s uh, introduction to computer science, we know that if there are two bad guys, of course, they're malicious. They can do all things, try to crash the protocol. If there are two bad guys, we have to have a 3T plus one uh, a total number of participants to make a thing that we can defeat these two bad guys. So, we get a rich consensus. But the, the most important, this is theoretical result, but the most important things about this uh, res, uh, assumption is that we assume that they are peer, for every two participants, they have a direct communication channel as the other channel has to be reliable. So that's a very, very strong requirement. Many people, when you talk about uh, uh, BFT protocols, they overlook these important things because a uh, communication channel, if not reliable, is synchronous. Something really bad things could happen. I will share, I will share you some examples about Ethereum. So that's important. Okay. So, so that means if we try to design a BFT protocol, we have to think about the assumption about the communication channel. In particular, for Hyperledger Fabric, uh, we think about the uh, communication channel as the internet. And internet is not 100% uh, uh, reliable. Okay. So internet is an open network. The denial of service attack, message re reordering attack, all these kinds of things could happen. As a consequence of course, some message gets dropped and some message could get reordered. That's very important. Reordered means if, if I deliver a message be before you, post a message before you, but the internet could make the, your message to arrive first. As that entirely difference could just crash the uh, BFT protocols. Okay. So now we think about, of course, we, we want to design some BFT protocol and we want to assume that we use the internet, okay? What's the model for the internet? Pro internet? So we can think about uh, two kinds of model for internet. The one first kind is called a synchronous network. That means every person try to broadcast his message until the other guy received. But then, of course, we do a lot of guarantee when the message is received. If I send your email today, you may receive that tomorrow, or you may receive that in the next year. That's all possible. Okay? So we assume that internet will delay. So that's a, a simplest network model. That, of course, is based on assumptions. If our protocol could be secure in the simplest network, that's perfectly okay, because the only assumption we make is that if I send a message, you will receive that. I do not care when you receive that. One year later or two years later or three years later, that's fine. So, but that's too strict. So now we think about a more, uh, it's very hard to design a protocol that's secure in the asynchronous network. So now we think about a partial asynchronous network. So that's a common some model that most people will take as if you try to design a secure uh, network protocol or based on internet. That means that our internet could be very bad for some time period, for five seconds or for five minutes. We do not know when the network will be good. And then after that, network will be good for some time period. We do not know 
how long it will be good. But but anyway, so we assume that our internet is a uh, perform in such kind of uh, uh, scenarios. It, the network become very bad. Your message get lost. Everything get lost. And then it become good. And then it become bad again. That become good. So we want to design a PFT protocol that should be secure in this kind of network environment. Okay. So that's a bad good, bad good. That's alternative environment. So also, of course, if we design a consensus protocol, we have to re require three requirements. The safety. Safety means uh, no fork. If you talk about consensus or public fabric or blockchain, that means we assume that no fork will ever happen. Okay, We do not want to have a, a fork of the blockchain. A uh, limitless, the second protocol is called pro requirements are called limitless automations. That basically means uh, we next block will be produced at some time. We do not want a deadlock. A deadlock means the, the, the blockchain will stop at a certain point. Go to a blue something micro win, window system like a blue screen. Okay. We do not want that to happen. So we want to make sure that the protocol will continue. If later work become good at some point, the pro, the next block will be continually should be produced. That's the basic requirement. Long trivial, the third property of the long trivial means you can always produce the empty block so without content. That's trivial, but we want a blockchain that has a consensus that means the latest, latest block will be produced at, at some time and that block is not empty and also no fork shows up. That's a, a requirements for us to design a BFT protocol or consensus for the uh, blockchains. Of course, we assume that this kind, three kind of things will happen if network become good and network become bad uh, uh, in some points, okay. Oh, what's that? No, I think some guy tried to control my screen. That's something, is something wrong? Okay, so, uh, so, okay, so, uh, okay, I'm sorry. So some someone tried to uh, control my screen, okay. So let me talk about some protocols uh, like the, this, we know that uh, Ethereum has converted to proof of stake just in this year. And they use the uh, uh, pro PFD protocol, the uh, caps Caps, Casper Friendly Finality Gadget, FFT, okay. Essentially, they're based on a uh, block. So the block is, of course, everyone can produce this kind of blocks, like forks. Fork all this country will happen. But we want to make sure the consensus layer want to make sure choose one pass. Our blockchain will only one pass. In order to achieve that, so everyone, the, everyone who has a, uh, who has a, Post their stake, they can try to vote. Okay, and vote means you cannot vote in this area. So if this is the next block, you cannot vote this and vote this. If you vote that, you will be slashed. Your stake will be taken back. Can, and you cannot vote this. If you can vote this and you can vote this, a straight subset, you cannot do that. That's only two requirements as this, in this uh, Ethereum blockchain. Uh, you do not is uh, is invalid vote. Other, oh, any other kind of vote will be valid. Or you are not allowed to do this kind of vote. If you do vote this, your your deposit will be slashed, okay? So that's formally the okay. specified in this way. And then normally, because I told you that this is a petition of blockchains you have, and we want to vote to find one, the valid blockchains we want this. In order for this, this chain to be valid from all the folks we have to have a super majority vote. Super majority vote means if we have three T plus one participants, you have we have to obtain two T plus one uh, vote for every link here. Yeah, okay, so that's it. So that's a basic, very simple uh, PSAT info tolerance protocol for Ethereum. But we, but uh, the important thing is, as I've mentioned, there are some things are missing in that kind of protocols. There is no specific network assignments. So what kind of uh, no specific network assignments, okay. So what's the network models they do not talk about? They want to be asynchronous, but that's not happening, okay. So anyway, so there are some kind of things, there are many, many things that are not, they are not available there as not as, as I'm missing there, but we found out, so let me try to give a very simple uh, attack on this protocol. And my only assumption that in order for me, 
if we want to if we want to uh, attack this protocol, how can we do? The only assumption I will make is that I control the message delivery system. That means essentially uh, assume that I'm the guy can uh, provide the internet service to to for for some for US government for for, for I'm, I'm not US government for US customers. And I have access to the infrastructure. I can reorder the message. If you if your message message posted early, but I can make that your message appear in a second. If I can only do that kind of reordering, I can make the uh, Ethereum just completely crash. Crash means uh, did not. How can I do that? So assume that A is the last finalized block. So that means it's finalized already. Already, and then we try to B is also the next block. Okay, no, if I got some because everyone try to produce four produce blocks, and C and D are two partition blocks that have been produced after B. Uh, so that means that to be four. And the the committee needed to vote which one the B C we should take or B D will take. But the bad guy is because it controls the network environment. I can avoid, I can arrange C and D to be delivered at a different time to different nodes. That's that's our assumption. The bad guy controls the message to deliver the audio system. If I can control that, I can bad T, I can uh, uh, make that T, the C will arrive T good guys uh, first, and T, the D will arrive at a good guy a T plus one good guys. And then the bad guy will run the deliver. At the end, uh, so we will T will get a C will get a T plus one vote. A D will get a T plus one 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 vote. That means no one can make a decision on that. No, that means they have to continue. Okay. okay. So, and then it means that E and T E is produced at next block of C and F is produced at the next block of C. Again, I can arrange E and F to be to be delivered to the node at different times. After that, I will get that E and G cannot be finalized. This kind of process can continue forever, and no, no, no the Ethereum network can never produce next block. That means they not okay. So that means uh, on this assumption. So we want to a uh, good PFT protocol should not allow this kind of things happen because we can we can assume that the bad guys can do all kinds of things. Okay, so. Because of the FFG is not perfect for Ethereum, they are trying to develop a next generation, if uh, next generation of the consensus protocols for the uh, Ethereum uh, blockchains, and that's called uh, they call it the uh, CASP, the friendly binary consensus or FBC. I will not go into details on this, but uh, as the idea is simple. If I receive some, some kind of message, I will locally make a decision. I think which block has high probability to be finalized in next, as then I vote. As then I, I have a function called prediction function or score functions. Then I try to vote and vote for the next block. And then after this kind of vote, I can make a decision. This is my estimate for next block. Okay. If I think zero is has high probability as one, I will vote for zero. If one has a high probability, I will I will vote for one. So so that's the next partition generation for the so next partition generation for the <clears throat> Can you hear? I think something's wrong, right? No. Can you, can I can you try to share? Can you try to no, share? Me. Great. You can hear me, right? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Sharing your screen. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, my screen's yet? Yeah. Can you try to share oh. your screen again? Oh, it, why is the block? Someone kicked me out, right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so essentially, so in the next generation of the Ethereum BFT protocol, they think, oh, why is there something? Okay, so so essentially, if you think, oh, I think someone controls my screen, right? Okay, so okay, anyway, so if this happens, try we try to uh, see that they will block, they they will uh, predict A or pre they will predict. Uh, 
uh, based on the prediction, I will vote for for uh, zero or one. That's and then after after some kind of decision, they will make a decision which one they will use uh, for the next final block. But we can show that I easily see that I can show that uh, if you can do a message reordering on the infrastructure level, uh, try to reorder the message that has been produced for the Ethereum network. So it's not reordering means if next block is uh, produced. Different people produce different blogs. And then we try to, I can schedule which blog to arrive to reach which person first or second. If I can do that, I can show, show a similar attack that you said we can never reach a next blog, we can never pr produce a little, little next blog. So we have tried, based on this, that means it's not secure. We have designed uh, some kind of protocols based on uh, branches, reliable pro protocols in the networks. We show that this could be achieved, could be make the Ethereum block secure if they want to use our strategy to do that. But that's uh, that's not to some things. They have a different network model. I will not go into that. And I, I will, I, 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 I have done some analysis on many, many different uh, broad protocols for the uh, blockchains in the uh, in cryptocurrency in particular. Okay, so uh, I'm sure the grandpa uh, the Polkadot is a large popular uh, cryptocurrency we know. And uh, their PFT protocol is grandpa. And they use different models to define that. I will not go into the details of the protocols, but I can share you that I have two kinds of attacks. I can do the similar attack by reordering message. If the two blocks are produced for next petition block, I can make that one block arrive at certain person at the first, or so one protocol reach another person, uh, some other uh, nodes first. If I can try to do a schedule on that, I can make sure that the grandpa will never produce next block. They will take not there, okay? So I have two kinds of attacks. I will not go into details, okay? So now let's talk about, so that's a different thing I saw that if you try to analyze many of the cryptocurrency or blockchain consensus protocol, you, find, you will find out you can, you can launch a lot of attacks. And it essentially means they, cannot, they will not reach the three requirements, safety, uh, safety uh, termination, or this kind of pro property. So we want to make sure why we do not use this uh, Best practice in the academics to try to design a protocol that is theoretically secure and I have a mathematical proof. No matter what kind of attack you do, you can reorder the message on the internet, you can do any kind of attacks. I can still, uh, the only requirements for my protocol to work is that internet will be good some, at some period and will be bad at some period. So if, if the internet becomes syn synchronized at some period for some time period, our protocol will work. So that's the only requirements we have and all other things could be mathematically prove, be proven that, that are secure. So let me try to talk about BTLS protocol. BTLS protocol is essentially, it's a blockchain version of DLS protocol. DLS, I'm sure I'm not you may, may or may not know that. DLS is one of the first protocol in, the, in our history uh, based on the sync partial synchronous networks. It was designed by three persons, DLS, that's three, three letters, okay? That they got the, uh, the, 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 the 20 award, 20 award as some, uh, from some research. So this is just a, a blockchain version of the most famous uh, DLS protocol. So uh, we are aware which I'm introducing to the Hubbleage fabric today, okay? So first I want, I want just to use, give an example use this example to show how BDS protocol works. And then I will give a formal definition and what's the challenge I have. Uh, but I think uh, if you can understand my, this uh, uh, four, four node examples, you will understand how BDS works, okay? So we have assumed that the four, the four guys, of course, this kills each of this bad guy. But of course, it's a bad guy, only he knows he's a bad guy. No one else knows that. In the first round, assume that the mini is a leader. We have a lead, ro uh, leader rotations. Okay? Everyone will send the, the mini what kind of blocks they have. He said, okay, I have B, the, uh, this big uh, master said, okay, I have B4. This guy, Mickey said, okay, I have B3. And this kills agent said, okay, I have B4. And uh, leader mini said, oh, I have B3. And uh, because no one, you said that B3 get two votes, B4 get two votes. That means there will no super majority. I said, okay, 
Mickey said, okay, I cannot reach an agreement. I cannot make a decision on the consensus. So, but the best block I have is B4. So I put post a message, broadcast a message called B4 to everyone, okay? So that's all I can do. I cannot make a decision, but I know from my knowledge uh, right now, I know that B4 is the best block we can work on. After that, because the meeting's job is done, so the baby master will become the leader, okay? Then, then that means everything, the voting process will restart. So everyone will send his best blog to the baby master, okay? So Mickey has B4, a baby master has B4, and Mickey has a B4. And this, of course, this guy always a bad guy. He tried to dis disorder the protocol. He tried to send B5, no. But this time, he got three Good, good message. That's a super majority. Okay, three B fours. So even B five is much better than B four, but uh, but we want a rich agreement on the on the on the majority. Well, we do not care about this uh, best 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 block there. So that means because okay, the baby the baby master said okay, I found a uh, a super majority agree agreement on B four. So he he asked everyone to knock that. On knock that, you can always think about this. In our real society, we all think, let me put this B4 on ballot. So no, let's put, put on ballot means the next step, you cannot vote anything outside the ballot. You can only vote the, the blocks are put on the ballot, okay? That's B4, I knock that. After knock that means, let's work on this ballot system. Also. Before everyone will commit to something, okay. So these good guys will commit to B4, B4, B4. But this is a bad guy, he will commit something different, B3. But anyway, for this, because everyone can, I can get a super majority for B3 or B4 are committed, okay. That means the baby master, the good, good guy. We have very, very good news. The B4 has been unanimously, not unanimously, has been approved by the super majority. So that means he will broadcast the side B4. That means B4 will be our official next block. So that's how the system works. Now we say that if we have three participants, we cannot reach agreement, okay? Again, we have three participants, the baby master, this bad guy become leader, okay? Everyone said, I, I give B3, I get B4. He said, I have a B3, B4. And then he said, okay, Please knock this, uh, let put B3 on the ballot. He will tell this guy, put B4 on the ballot. He will send a different message to different guys. So that means he will think he, will, he can vote for B4, B3, but he, he will meet for B3, uh, B4, uh, B4, but he will vote for both, B3 and B4 at the same time. So he vote commit B3, he commit B4, and he commit both B3 and B4. And that, after that, he said, ask him, ask the uh, Mickey to decide on B3 and ask people master to decide before because he can't decide both this day. And that's, you know, that if we have only three participants, obviously, so this bad guy can make the system work in such a way that uh, Mickey and uh, baby master, they are all good guys. But they agree, uh, they think the next official uh, block will be, he will think B3 and he will think B4. That essentially means uh, the system will, will not work. The system will not work. And uh, 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 we got a fork. That means uh, a system it does not work. So theoretically, so uh, pr uh, we have a very detailed uh, implement, 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 implementation level uh, description of the BDS protocol. I will not go into details. But they are not, the principle is very similar to what I have described here, but it's mainly some things try to go this kind of details, uh, 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 mathematical details. We have to describe that in the mathematical detail and try to uh, uh, give a mathematical proof. So if you have an interest, you try to read the papers, but uh, I will not go into detail about the description of the protocol. Uh, let me, next, minute, let me try to uh, uh, do some kind of comparison analysis, uh, compare our protocol with other protocols somewhere of you law. PBFT, uh, tenement, uh, liberal BFT or hot stuff. So normally, liber liber BFT is related to hot stuff. You know that. So we know that this message means this is a communication uh, message we have done. And uh, how many rounds we have? You know that PPFT, of course, is that means. So this this lead the broadcast. So how many? What is every step? Who do you want? So this is a, a simple called leader protocol. This means all participants send a message to the leader. Leader try to hear, to hear use his ear. So that's I use this symbol. And this means, means everyone try to broadcast. Everyone want to try to broadcast to everyone. So this is essentially 
PPFT, you see that it means uh, uh, first the data broadcast, and then everyone broadcast, everyone broadcast. There's three steps. That's P P P PPFT. And message communication tune plus tune plus tune square plus n. And n is the number of part, uh, participants. And authentication how many? So this 10 minute PFT are similar to PPFT, but just a little different because this is a, uh, you see that this is a reduce, this is a, uh, there are some differences, uh, PPFT. A liberal PFT or hot stuff, you, they have the same steps. So it's not, so you can think of that as a mesh network. This is a star network. Star network means uh, only need a broadcast, everyone send the message to need. It's, we do not have one, everyone broadcast to everyone. Because everyone broadcast to everyone, we will get a, a unsquare message communication. That's a lot. So that's my, we, for this, Nibra BFT or hot stuff BFT or BTLS, we reduce the message communication by avoiding this uh, uh, everyone broadcast to everyone, okay? But we have four steps, but uh, Libra BFT has the uh, same steps. Uh, so that's the uh, advantage of this. Of course, Libra BFT, they try to achieve some kind of a pipeline protocols. That may or may not happen or may not help. It really depends on people to compare that, okay? What's advantage? But at least we can do that in four steps. We think that's a good luck. Our experiment uh, uh, experiments show that that's good luck indeed, okay? So we have implemented implemented this in the, uh, using good language, good language or good program language. And the code will be available from my GitHub or from the publisher. A lab of PTLs, lab of the, uh, 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 lab of the GitHub, okay. So we have implemented that different attack scenarios, uh, message reordering, all different kinds of attack scenarios, and also delay the message. Some people do not malicious attack, all these concerns. And our simulation says that we, our simulation, we have done this in the Linux machines with uh, 64 gigabytes at, uh, uh, RAM as this kind of things. This, this is the configuration, eight core configurations. We know that if we have 20 nodes, uh, it has 1.48 seconds to reach agreement. If we have 100 nodes, we need four seconds, 4.7 seconds to reach agreement. I can tell you that uh, essentially, so that's important to comparison to this. So why pipeline will may or may not, not work from Libra BFT, uh, uh, that's advantage or not. Uh, because the reason that we found out for the 4.7 seconds, essentially, the major cost that comes from the uh, signature, signature verification, okay? So it's not really about the BTS, uh, BFT protocol itself delay. It's a major complication comes from signature verification. No matter which protocol you use, the signature uh, uh, verification has to be done. So that's a major, uh, major cost. But from, uh, if we do not think about the message ver verification part, all the concerns can be done in one, one second. So that's, uh, uh, I think it's a very important if we try to deploy this in a blockchain, it's very important to say that what's the, uh, practical environment and what's the most expensive part and so that okay so and also so not the next so we, so we have a, so this code has been a BTLS code code consensus code has been tested and tried very carefully so everything works perfect okay so we want to show that how can we try to integrate this into Hubble okay there are two potential ways because right now the Hubble fabric uses a raft uh, consensus okay so we think about if one particular easy solution could be we try to repackage BTS, BTLS implementation to provide all the interface that Raft has such that it's easy or seamlessly to integrate uh, uh, Hubble with uh, BTLS. But that may not be the best solution. I think the best solution could be we try to Put your approach one, approach two, we try to directly try to write some interface to interface Hubble Fabric with uh, BDLS. Okay, so that's a uh, uh, partition of two. Okay, so uh, we want, uh, we are right now, we are looking for some volunteers who can contribute uh, any kind of, of contribute, con contribution, uh, a, a strong welcome so we can work on this. 
uh, as soon as possible. Okay. So if you want to know the uh, reference, we have all the reference available from the so that's the uh, uh, that's the uh, papers you links. I, I think we have shared with you. As uh, this is a, a 2019 version of the paper, early version of this. Uh, uh, early version of this, and then GitHub implementation there, okay. So that's my uh, discussion uh, here. Essentially, I wanted to emphasize that uh, we have developed the BDLS protocol. That's uh, it's a blockchain version based on most famous DLS protocol. DLS protocol is the first ever uh, protocol in our academic history that has been produced for the partial synchronous networks uh, by three guys. Bigger guys. Uh, I think it's three of the uh, DOS, two of them has got the uh, Tony Award. Okay, so it's a very good protocol, but we shall revise that to the blockchain so that it works with the blockchain. And it has a mathematical proof, it works perfect. And also, with our implementation experience shows that we, it's robust at, against all different attack, attack scenarios. Our protocol itself is very good, and reliable, but the only expensive part is very signature verification. But for all kinds of consensus protocols, we have to think about uh, signature verification is, is, is mandatory. And uh, it depends on how many nodes we have. Even if we have 100 nodes to do the consensus, we still, uh, we can reach a great, uh, produce every block in four, uh, five seconds, okay? Uh, in a very, very, uh, we, we, our little simulation, uh, we assume that uh, traffic is from a European country to US all across the globe, okay? So we delay, all the delay model we, we build, okay? Okay, so that's all my presentation. I thank you very much. Uh, I think next, uh, uh, perhaps, uh, Ahmed will present. And after that, we can go to QSH or Daniel. So what's your... Yeah, yeah, let me... Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Wang. Um, appreciate your uh, your presentation. Um, I guess we'll save the uh, Q&A um, at the end of this uh, this event. And uh, we'll pass the floor over to Ahmed. Uh, but before I do that, I do want to apologize to everyone about what happened earlier. Um, this is the first time that it has actually ever happened to a Hyperledger event. Um, David and I just spoke about it and uh, it has not happened to us before. Um, and um, we're embarrassed about it, um, that it happened, um, but uh, we'll take uh, extra precautionary measures to, to make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, so with that said, let me go ahead and um, go ahead and take some controls here. I'm going to make sure that no one is able to start their video um, and also going to uh, um, make sure that no one can unmute themselves except for the pre presenter. So just give me one second here and I'll go ahead and do that. Ahmed, are you able to unmute yourself? Go ahead. Now it is. Yeah. All right, floor is yours. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Let me start quickly as we run out, out of the time. But to continue on the title of this presentation, which is BFT uh, Consensus for Blockchains and Hyperledger Fabric. Basically, it's me and PDLS for blockchains and PDLS protocol for Hyperledger Fabric. So in order to do that, let me just like uh, introduce introduction really quick for myself. My name is Ahmed Saleh. As Daniel said, I'm a senior software engineer three tech lead with AHOL Delays. Also, I'm a PhD student working with Dr. Yong Wang at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Let's have some hands-on code Run the protocol. I have all, all the commands that you need to run the protocol for, for PDLS as a standalone. And we'll, we'll take more advanced work later on. So I already cloned the code. Let me see the time. Yeah, I'm not going to clone it again. So, so basically, I cloned it the workspace. I built it within the CMD, MUCon. Then we'll start just like spinning some machine here. 
and we see how they communicate. So you run, run. If you want to see how you can run the protocol, you can just pass the help flag to see the available commands and parameters that you can pass. For myself here, I'm just going to pass the ID. I'll start with ID zero, and I will pass uh, the lesson to specify the part that I want the protocol to run on. Let's so say zero. In the meantime, I will spend another machine. Sometimes when the get bash like is not allow you to write, just like type preset to reset the session. That will solve the issue. It's recently it's happened to me. ID one. Let's see. Spend another machine about a quick. You will notice here once you spend a machine, another second machine, the first machine, acknowledge that. Also, the, the new node is notifying you that it's joining the network. Last machine real quick. I can share with you guys later on how we can contribute and make that success. Yes. Yeah. So now we have like four machines spinning on that network, communicating among each other using the PDLS network. We'll see the rounds going on, and there is another test that we can run. But for the time being, I was planning to present it, but you already have it in the slide. Uh, Daniel or David, they will share with you. you just go to the uh, root uh, folder of the consensus, and you spend that command. Right, we'll keep them though running while I'm continuing on the presentation. We'll be here really quick. Now I'm going to talk about the BFT consensus for blockchains in general. We do have some implementation called PDLS chain. Uh, the code is in the, in the PDLS organization, which is part from Dr. Yong Wang, as we create some organization for the PDLS itself so people can fork can contribute. Also, uh, I put the implementation for you guys to give it a try. Uh, basically, it's on Geth network, which is go implementation of the Ethereum network. Uh, by default, the account is locked. I put some uh, various way to unlock the account using Geth or using the Web3. Uh, I'm going to jump to the second part, which is the main purpose of this demo, if we can get that success to give it a try on Hyperledger Fabric to integrate the PDLS uh, protocol. So as David and Daniel shared, the PDLS already be, being hosted on the Hyperledger uh, lab. We contribute there is I create a couple forks, the expected repos from Fabric that we think that we need to touch to integrate the PDLS to Hyperledger Fabric. Also, there is discussion open for the Fabric pro uh, project and PDLS. And there's also a couple issues that we believe this is like what we are really need to, as initial steps to integrate the PDLS Fabric. This discussion, please feel free to 
as your awareness, if you think what route that we need to take, if you have the expertise on raft, on fabric, that will be awesome. Uh, the default branch of the fabric that gets parked from Hyperledger Fabric, which is 2.3. I name it's DLS release 2.3. Also, there is uh, another branch based on 2.4. Since we have the getaway over there, like I just like want to say, take a step on the back to give it a try on 2.3 first. Discussion is, is up and running. Uh, the issue is bored also for you guys to pick or to add or uh, responsibility. It's open so you can fork it and, and submit your pull requests. Also, we do have Dallas Census Community Call, which is every other Thursday. The next one will be on 22nd. Go through the link on the chat. There's also a Discord, uh, Discord channel for PDLS on the Hyper, Hyper Ledger Discord server as well. Let me send the link to the chat for people for their concern. Yes. To join the community call. And of course, like you can contact me, I'll, I'll throw also my contact information. So whoever like having the expertise and passion to contribute that project, you are welcome. Everybody like, it's really good opportunity. My email, my GitHub account, what? my LinkedIn account. And what? I'm gonna hand what? the podium to Daniel to wrap up what? the sessions. Any question regarding uh, PDLS, Professor, we're, okay. we're glad you have Professor Yong Wang here. And thank you, I apologize. Appreciate our attendance. Great. Thank you, Ahmed, appreciate it. Sure. Um, for, for anyone who is, uh, who is uh, wanting a copy of the presentation, um, please reach out to me directly. Um, and I can send you a copy over email, um, PDF version of it. Um, we're going to open the floor up. We have about 10 minutes. Um, we're going to open the floor up uh, for, to, to all the participants uh, for any questions that they might have. Um, we go ahead and unmute to allow you to unmute yourselves. Um, so yeah, please go ahead and jump in, ask your questions away. I know that there were some questions uh, on the chat. Um, so please go ahead and verbally speak up if you, if you want. Uh, yes, thank you, Daniel. Okay. I saw a question I think Peter has asked about, uh, have we tried to scale to 1,000 nodes? Uh, we have not, uh, to be honest, okay, so, but we can, obviously we can try that, but we, uh, because we do all the simulation on, on a powerful computer, we have not done that. But uh, we are, you are welcome, and we can, we, we can do that, okay, thank you. Okay. Any uh, any other questions out there? I think Blair Taco uh, raises his hand. Some question. I don't know if you can unmute him. I think there was a pretty good comment up there too from, uh, from Taco One Player. Yeah. Or uh, Player One Taco. Um, so let me go ahead and read this real quick. When there is a fault from communicator. Is there a mechanism that either removes that communicator for an ever increasing time, in parentheses, resulting in some penalty, or, One sec. or slashing or even reducing the weight of that communication results? Not looking at the fact that leader is a bad actor, how does your system allow one agent to commit or transmit slash lock more than one choice at a time? Would it not be better if the system only allows one choice, even if it is the wrong one? 
Uh, yes, I think uh, so. Some of the, so of course we we assume that the data could be bad guys. Of course, if the data is bad guy, no re, no agreement will be, will be reached. We have some. Uh, so that oh, that's interesting thing. I talk about. I uh, I can talk about the in some academic papers. Some some. Some discussion of PFT protocols they talk about the round synchronization. They just assume the round synchronization is trivial, it's uh, easy free. As, but uh, if you check the Libra PFT, when, when they try to implement the hot stuff for Libra PFT, they find it's very challenging to do round synchronization. To be honest, the round synchronization is a lot of PFT protocols. So that means we have, uh, we have to make sure our implementation. Uh, address this challenge. So you are right. If the leader is bad, so he will be uh, he will be uh, after some wrong synchronization after some time delay he will fail, and then we will transfer to next leader. We assume that some leader will be good. It's always possible the leader is bad, and we assume that consecutive leader one, leader two, leader three that could all be bad, and we hope that the, uh, when the leader five is a good guy. A late work is good at that moment, they will reach agreement. And we have a mathematical proof we can achieve that. Thank you for that. There's another question here. Um, how many transactions per second did you observe when running performance evaluation? Do you have a formula for scaled time? Those are two uh, separate questions. Yes, that's. Uh... A uh, transaction per second is really that's a different topic because we only think about the consensus. Okay, so it's a, you it's a, if you try to talk about uh, design the uh, blockchain, the transact or you can see that the transaction could be in which layer, layer two or layer one, and all you can see for that or not. So uh, we do a lot of exactly see that we do a lot of claim the transaction per second because it really depends on the block size and the computing power to verify all these blocks. So it's a, uh, for different blockchains, they have different systems for that. Uh, but we can say that if we have, my picture show you that if we have 10 nodes and 100 nodes, that's how much time we can reach an agreement. We assume that the transaction is verified by the blog, by not by uh, by the load uh, blog, blog, blog producers, okay. So, uh, but I also, also want to make sure to say that uh, it's also where it depends on the signature verification process. Our experiment show that it's the most expensive part for the delay is not about the transaction, it's about the signature verify. If you have 1,000 nodes, you have to verify 1,000 signatures. And how much it takes for you to do that? That's essentially the major bottlenecks for you for the cons to produce consensus. So the consensus is not really from the blockchain BDOS protocol itself. It's a, if the larger population it is, it comes from you have no matter which uh, uh, Byzantine tolerant, fault tolerance protocol you use, you have to verify all the signatures. That's you have you cannot avoid that. So it depends on how how fast your signature scheme it is. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Any uh, any other questions? Uh, I guess we have one more question here. Uh, but you had a slide about integrating the library into Fabric. So did you have any performance evaluation of the Fabric integration or not? Uh, not yet. We I have a plan to integrate into Fabric yet, but it's not functional yet. So we, we were not able to taste that yet. Thank you. This is this is a contribution that we are willing from you, Yakov, to contribute on on get the evaluation on the on the order our service. <laughs> All right, this is a good event. Uh, any, any any other questions? I feel like uh, this questions kind of slowed down a little bit. Oh, okay, there's another question here from Player One Taco. Have you thought of multi-layer transactions, settlement separate from execution with a consensus finalized as block seal? Yes, that's a perfect, that's a very good question indeed. So I think so that, that really depends on the blockchain design. I think that we will think about consensus as what you have mentioned as a time as block seal. 
So that based, I think there are some uh, cryptocurrency blockchains they are trying to do that. The data availability to separate the data availability and consensus. The role of consensus is essentially just to be a timestamp or a, a sale on the blocks. So, so that in that case, because block transactions are, are, are done at the different layers. So essentially, uh, only since uh, BTL is consensus protocol, the only time you need, how, how, how often you can finalize the block depends on how, how fast you can verify all these 100 or 1000 signatures. So if, if you can verify signatures, the BF, BTLS product talk itself takes minimum, minimum time in that part. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, is it okay if I ask who to contact that film? Um, Dr. Wang. Um, okay. Um, there, there are some people trying to see if uh, they can contact you directly. Is that, is that okay? Um, can, can I provide your contact information? Sure. Uh, feel free to share out my information, I have my information. And if someone wants to volunteer to contribute, thank you very much. Okay. I will provide your information separately to these, uh, these um, members. Okay. Uh, another question here, uh, since we got a few more minutes, um, would it be possible would it be possible to generate a master signature that would be generated when 1,000 signatures and use that to speed zone tra transactions? Speed uh, zone transactions equals a city in parentheses zone. Yes, that uh, really depends on what kind of crypto signatures we want to use. There are some very efficient ones but it may not be popular, popularly accepted by the community. So we, for the community, for Hyperledger Fabric, I think we have already some kind of signature schemes right now. So we have to use that. Unless we can change it to a different signature scheme. So, but the faster signature scheme, the better, okay? The reduce that. But I think even right now, if I'm not sure the Hyperledger Fabric alone, we need how many blocks, how many nodes to do the consensus. If 100 is a, Bigger is normal size. I think five seconds. English scheme. That's fine. So yeah, thank you. Oh, Merkel, someone was asking about scale similar to the Merkel root uh, tree. Yeah, that's good point also indeed. So uh, yeah, that's good. Some we have tried to do that, but the BTS can be implemented. Can can be uh, can be optimized if we want to use kind of pipeline idea. That's what you're talking about, local root trees. Uh, in that case, it, 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 uh, my my experience. Uh, let me share my experience. Okay, my experience is that uh, uh, depending on this. So how often does the uh, hybrid fabric have produced a uh, fork? If the fork is produced very Infrequent, infrequently, then the Merkle tree that come technology or pipeline could significantly improve the performance, the delays. So that means significantly. But if the fork is produced more frequently, the pipe, pipeline technology or Merkle tree may not help because you have to deal with all these kind of forks. That pipeline will waste a lot of your time in the implementation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, one last here. Uh, I read a paper about scaling that forgets about brand forget forget about forgets about branches on a Merkle. So that is that it is there, not explored by other nodes unless it is needed. Sort of like hidden map. Uh, yeah, that's always uh, that's always possible. We can. We have a lot of times that run now in the BDLS protocol implementation. That's implementation specific optimization technology for the BDLS. Uh, we have a lot of tries that, but that could certainly be very important. If you like, uh, we can contribute. Contribute. We can have a discussion. Sometimes we can think how that work. Thank you very much. Uh, just if you have more interest in uh, continue that kind of thing, the implementation with me, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I think Daly will post my contact information and uh, also Ahmed. Uh, uh, contact information. We can have some meeting, separate meetings to discuss specific, specifically for that. Thank you.
Okay. Well, we're right at the dot. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, appreciate all the, uh, um, all the good conversations, uh, good input, feedback, and, and the questions. So it uh, looks like everyone really enjoyed the, um, the event today. Uh, thank you again for, to, to both speakers here, Dr. Wang and uh, Ahmed. Thank, thank you so much. Um, and uh, we will uh, connect with you again next time. Um, and Ahmed, Dr. Wang, uh, you have, would like to connect with you after the event. So uh, there, there should be an invite coming your way shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel, for organizing this. Dave, and thanks for all the audience who come to participate in, the, in this meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.